Okay, in the last tutorial then we looked at how to actually prep our tracks and get them in time. Uh, what we're going to do in this one is really look at how to set up the interface so you can use it like a DJ system and how to record your mixes and edit them if you need to. Um, it's worth mentioning that um, the last process we looked at might seem a little bit tedious compared to other applications where you can just drag and drop the file and it's all synced. Um, I think that that it is easy to drag and drop into some programs and they work, but this one is it's definitely uh, the tightest I found when it comes to synchronizing uh, the tracks. And once you have prepped one track, as I said before, it does save an ASD file, which is the analysis file. So once if you were to drag the same track into another project or another DJ set, um, you wouldn't need to do that process again. It would all be saved. So if you were just doing a new DJ set on the fly and you drag and dropped files from your um, from your library, they've already been analysed and you prep them, then they're going to work fine. Um, so what we're going to look at now is how to set up the, the interface. Um, it's totally up to you how you do this. If you're just working with two tracks like an average DJ system, then um, it might be worth expanding them a little bit just so it, you, know, you can see them a bit clear on the screen and maybe a master channel as well. Um, you may work with three or four tracks. You may want you know your two full song type tracks and then a few more tracks for like extra loops or fills to be a bit more creative um, whatever you want to do really the main thing we want to look at we need to be aware of is the crossfader so if you can't see on your screen just press the little X button on the side here and you can see it inserts a crossfader which is just underneath your master channel and underneath these channels you get the option of A or B by default um, it won't be set to anything which means when I click either track they will both play like that. If we turn the crossfader on, um, what we do is we assign a track uh, a letter. So if I assign this track A and this track B, um, basically on the crossfader, A is here and B is over here on the right side. So if I was to play it now with the crossfader to the left, I should just get this channel. However, both tracks are playing. You can see that they're both uh, going. If I move the crossfader over, there we go. So it's just like a crossfader on a mixer. If you right click on the crossfader um, or control click on a Mac, um, you can actually change the settings of a crossfader. So if you've used the DJ mix before, you might be aware of such things as a like having a slow fade or a shortcut if you're doing scratching. So a slow fade means um, it's going to be, uh, I'll give you an example, more like these faders here. It will fade one in until you get to the middle and then you start fading the other one out. Uh, we've also got um, fast cut. Now what this will do is when I move it around here the B deck will cut in quite quickly and quite loud. So you get a really sharp cut. So it depends what you want to do. Um, it, the, the fun really begins I suppose when you assign the crossfader and your faders and whatever to a MIDI controller and you can just use this a bit more um, creatively than, than I am right now with the mouse. Um, however, that's the that's the crossfader. I'll leave on intermediate for now. Um, you may want to set up some effects as well, um, just some performance type effects. So obviously we've got return um, channels here. So sort of thing I put on a return channel is um, I have a I think an effect that I've made myself, which is kind of a combination of a filter dub delay with a compressor. So I whack that on this channel, uh, and what this allows me to do, again, if I sign it to a MIDI controller, I can just do a nice little little fill with uh, some filter dub delay. And obviously that's synchronized to the BPM. Uh, another really cool effect to use on the master channel is uh, the, the beat repeat, uh, which kind of gives it that stuttering a kind of glitchy effect. You have to set this up, um, change the pref change the settings on it just to get it working right. So I usually ch use it as an insert, um, bring the gate down to four, no triplets, and then the chance is actually kind of like the, the chance of it actually working or not. So on zero, it won't actually do anything. If I bring it up now. Uh, variation is pretty cool because you can it varies the um, like the, the rate of it, so you get sort of yeah, that kind of thing. 
anyway, um, so this is kind of setting up your, your basic view, just really just using, making sure what's on screen is what you actually want to use and getting rid of stuff that you don't. So I suppose the next step is if you were to actually have a load of tracks in here and you wanted to actually record um, a set, it doesn't record it straight out of Ableton as audio, it records it as a performance and then you can bounce that performance as an audio file, just like if you'd made a track in Ableton, you'd make it all first using MIDI and audio files and then bounce the overall track down. That's exactly what we do here. So I'll just give you a little demonstration. I'll do a very quick mix and then show you what we can do with it. So just hit record at the top and play. Okay, so there's my very quick amateurish mix. Um, what we do now is we change the view. We go up to here and we click to go to the arrangement view. And what you'll see it's done is it's actually recorded um, the, the clips that I played, when I played them, and any other data such as the send effect there, the filter dub delay. If we look at the master channel, um, it shows the, the beat repeat when I've use that and when I've not we can also see the mixer it should show me the crossfader so these are all the movements that I've recorded anything I've pressed or played or switched or turned is recorded here Now this is good because what it means is if we've made any mistakes uh, we can actually edit them here make it sound perfect before we bounce it um, so if we play this now so this is now playing the arrangement view See these clips aren't playing. So I made a bit of a dip there on the crossfader. So what I might do is actually uh, get rid of those. Move this back up and just uh, get rid of that mistake. filter effects here, the filter delay effect on this track and the crossfader fading it out. There you go. So you have full control over your mix even after it's recorded, uh, iron out any mistakes, uh, which is, I suppose you don't really want to be doing that live, that's not what it's about, but if you're doing a studio mix then you know it's perfectly valid to do that. And if you're doing more creative stuff like adding extra loops and effects, uh, it can be quite useful just to come here to tidy stuff up if you need to. Once we've done that, we need to then bounce it as audio. So all you do is you move your locators to the uh, start and end of your um, recording. Go to File, Export Audio. Um, look at the settings here. You want to be bouncing the master, which is everything that's coming out of the main output. Um, normalize if you want to. Uh, it just searches for the maximum peak and then raises the overall volume um, of, of your master recording um, before it clips. Uh, and then just check your settings, whatever format you want to do it in, and then OK, and that will bounce it now. I'll just whack it on my desktop. OK, so there's my finished mix uh, ready to go. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Have fun.